What's up, Cal Gang? All right, so we got this problem on our board. Uh, basically, this textbook, and we're pushing it against a spring, and then we're gonna let it go, and it's gonna have this friction, so it's gonna get blasted off at a certain speed, and then this friction is gonna slow it down. And we're trying to find how far does it go in that distance, right? So let's do that. So we're gonna use our work energy theorem for this one. Um, so if you don't know the work energy theorem, I'm gonna explain it a little bit, but I've done it a couple times on this channel, so hopefully you know it a bit by now. So what it says is that work non-conservative is equal to the change in energy. So work non-conservative, that's basically your friction force, your air resistance, any of that sort. So in this problem, all we're concerned with is friction. So that's gonna be work done by friction, right? So yeah, let's write work of friction. And then our change in energy, right? So this is gonna be kinetic energy, spring potential energy, uh, gravitational potential energy, all that stuff. So what do we have here? Well, it's on a flat surface, so there's really no change in gravitational energy. Don't have to worry about that one. It's gonna be in motion, so let's, let's write out delta K, right? That might be something we need. And then let's think about, it definitely has a spring, so it's gonna have a change in spring energy. So let's do that, US. So those are what we're gonna use, right? So let's move on, right? So work of friction, right? So that means force of friction times uh, its distance, right? So that's, that's just the expansion of work of friction is it's the force times distance uh, is that. So that's perfect. Now we have our distance, which is what we're trying to find. So delta K, so that means it's gonna be K final minus K initial, right? That's the definition of delta K is final minus initial. And then uh, U, uh, U spring final minus U spring initial. So let's look at this stuff that we have here, right? So our kinetic energy final, that we're thinking when it comes to stop, right? So it's gonna start and then it's gonna speed up and then it's gonna slow down and stop. And that's gonna be your final energy. Uh, but that's gonna be zero, right? When we're at stopped, uh, K is gonna equal zero because there's no kinetic energy, it's gonna be stopped. So this is zero. And then K initial, well, it's being held against a spring also at zero velocity. So it turns out there's actually no change in kinetic energy in the system. Even though it speeds up from final to initial, it's still zero, zero. So don't need to worry about these two numbers. So you spring final, well, basically we're pushing it against the spring at the beginning and then we're gonna let it go and the spring is just gonna not be useful at the end. So you spring final is also gonna drop. And what we actually end up with is just force of friction times distance is equal to negative u spring initial. Right, so that's pretty handy. Uh, so what are we gonna do from here now? Well, let's screw us all, right? Okay, so we're trying to find distance, right? So we're gonna say distance is equal to u spring initial over f friction. So now we have to expand this stuff out. So u spring is one half k x squared, and then this uh, is gonna be equal to, uh, so force of friction is equal to force normal times the coefficient of friction. Uh, that's another formula I need. You need a lot of formulas for this stuff, but hopefully you can get all that down. So uh, force of friction, or force normal is equal to, you know, uh, gravity, mass, uh, coefficient of friction because uh, our force body diagram, if we're just looking in the y direction, all it is is force of gravity and then force of normal. So we know force of normal is gonna be equal to force of gravity, just in the opposite direction. Okay, so then distance. So what do we have here? So it's gonna be, let's move that negative, the two to the bottom. So then gravity is also gonna be negative 9.81, so the negatives are gonna drop and we're gonna end up with kx squared over g mass coefficient of friction times two over the bottom. So then if you plug all this in, uh, which we're gonna do now, so it's gonna be 200 is the, or 250, excuse me, coefficient of friction, 250, times its position, or its, its uh, compression distance, which is our 0 0.25, and then square that, and all of that over two times 9.81, times its mass, which is 2.50, times its coefficient of friction, 0 0.3, and then I'm gonna make sure I did all that right. Yeah, I did do that right. Two times 0 0.3, yep. And then this gives you 1.06 meters, which is a pretty reasonable number, right? So there you go, so that's how you solve this kind of problem. Just gotta get comfortable with this work energy theorem. Don't be afraid to make some mistakes and just try to like, you know, keep solving these problems. Uh, keep coming to help if you need it. And uh, yeah, so peace. Uh, thanks for helping, or thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next video, so bye guys.